going to talk about is information security and privacy or how you get privacy into the discussion with your information security team. I don't have, uh, well I do have a PowerPoint presentation, but I figure that you've all suffered death by PowerPoint, so I'm not going to do one for you today. We'll just talk about privacy and what it's all about. Privacy and information security are actually two separate things. They may not seem like, they may seem like two things that are together, but they're really not. They share more of a symbiotic relationship. Um, the controls are implemented in a different way. Um, information security builds a perimeter. It uh, essentially gets you to the door, whereas privacy is more about being inside the door. It controls the application interface. The definition for privacy, I work in the um, healthcare sector, as I said, for the University of Utah Hospital. Um, information privacy is more about appropriate use of data. So what happens with that appropriate use of data is, is that what we look at is, is we look at how our employees use that data. And so what we're trying to understand is we don't want them to exceed their use. We don't want them to change anything. With the HIPAA rules, what we're looking at is change of state, change of data state. Um, the thing to remember with uh, information security or privacy is, is that data is all about what's entrusted to um, a company. And that in trust is critical to how a company succeeds or an organization succeeds. Last year, um, Office of Civil Rights, Health and Human Services um, put in $26 million worth of fines um, for organizations that uh, ran afoul of uh, Health and Human Services. Um, those fines really are a situation that can hurt an organization for a number of reasons, but they also can hurt the reputation of an organization. The thing to remember about information security, we're still looking at the same stuff, confidentiality, integrity, availability. With privacy, we're still looking at appropriate use. The thing to remember about that appropriate use is it's really about hearts and minds. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get our employees to think about that use. We want them to understand that they've got to treat that data as carefully as they possibly can. What I'm really striving for a lot of times when I talk to employees and when I talk about privacy is to get our employees to recognize the data ship is, um, ownership is their responsibility. I know that's a hard concept for a lot of people. But what we want them to do is we want to get them to recognize that the data that they're handling, there is responsibility to it. It means something to people. For example, healthcare data right now is one of the number one targets being seen. Uh, our opponents, the hackers that we look at, is now one of the number one targets um, for uh, hacking. Um, in the global expanse or the global threat area because it's a wealth of data. There is just so much information in there for a hacker to use, for anyone to use in that data field, that that's what they're after. And that's why we've got to protect it. That's why we've got to think about it. And that's why we've got to get our employees to think about it. Because the controls that we can put on it, um, for you, those of you that are familiar with um, the technology controls, they can be used. We have products like Iatric, um, Secure Onyx, Fair Warning, Potensis. Those solutions can be extremely expensive. Our employees are not quite as expensive. And if we train them up to it, we can create a culture where they can think more about what they're doing when they're handling that data. And that's what we've got to do sometimes. We've got to get them to think about what they're doing with that data and to make correct decisions or at least make decisions about how they're handling it. 
Because frankly, I just don't know that we've got the ability to pay for all the technology solutions that keep coming our way. I don't know that we've got the ability to do that as long as, uh, as we continue down the road. What we're ultimately looking for is role-based access. That to me is where we've got to get to. The problem with it is, is it's tough to implement. Because in an operational environment, we have a mix of different role-based fields that we've got to play with. We've got, um, in a clinical environment, we've got a variety of different um, access levels that we have. But we've also got a bunch of different profiles that we have to fulfill. We've got a clinical person that does a variety of different things. I ran into something recently where a PT, uh, physical therapist, was at the same time an IT person for the department, was also a student working on getting a master's degree in business. He had three different profiles with a variety of different access, and somehow we had to give him the correct access for all those different profiles. And he was working in the burn unit. And he was the IT person for that burn unit. I mean, he came to our attention because he triggered an alarm because he was accessing a patient. When in reality, he was working as his hat, uh, working in his role as the PT person for the burn unit. It's things like that that make role-based access so tough, but it's something that we need to implement in order for us to get the access levels we need to get correct access, or correct, uh, get uh, correct uh, controls in place. When we talk about um, information security and technology controls, the thing to remember is, is we're trying to get people delivered to the door with the technology that we have. We establish the firewalls. We've got the VPN tunnels. We stick that security access in, in line. Then with the privacy controls in place. We control the access as people get in the door with a variety of different things, but we also get our employees thinking about it at the same level. Um, what we're ultimately uh, looking for with privacy is the idea that we create rules of the road with role-based access. We limit the access to align with business so that business has can succeed with what they need to do. At the same time, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the dialogue open with information security. We want to align with information security so that privacy enters into that conversation because too often, information security and privacy never even get into the mix. If we could get both of them into the conversation with IT and business, we can get some sort of alignment to help us achieve some cohesive and unified coverage to get success as we try and protect the organization. The other side of um, security, or I should say privacy, that we're trying to go for, and this is the goals um, from what is known as the Fair Information Privacy Practices. What you're looking for with privacy practices is transparency, that's for the user. What you want is transparency so that they understand what the data is being used for. Individual participation. Make sure that they understand what it's for. Purpose specification. You want them to understand why you're using the data and what it's for. Data minimization being use it only for what it's supposed to be used for. You don't want to use everything. Just use just what you need. Use limitations, same thing. Use it just for what you need. Data quality and integrity. Maintain just for quality and integrity. Don't let it get loose. Also, the security side of it. You want to maintain security. Accountability and auditing. You want to be able to audit and account for all of the data that's being used. Uh, speaking of accountability and auditing, I recently had a situation where a company informed me of a breach of my personal data. Um, I got this letter in the mail telling me that a company that I'd worked for 20 years ago told me that my data had been exposed in a phishing attack. What had happened was, was that the company had received, um, uh, I guess in the payroll department, they'd received an email from the CFO indicating that 
they needed to have all the um, employee data from the last 20 years uploaded to a Dropbox account, which they did, including my data, which I was so thrilled about. 20 years. I mean, 20 years. How do you protect yourself from stuff like that? I can't. I can't protect myself when somebody makes a mistake like that and takes my data and uploads it to Dropbox. I mean, the thing of it is, is just by saying the word Dropbox should have been enough to say there's no reason for anybody to upload anything to Dropbox. But that never entered into it. The funny thing of it was, was that's what I told the uh, general counsel for the company. I said, you've got to be kidding me. Dropbox should have been the clue. Dropbox should have been the clue that you shouldn't have been uploading anything. So what are you going to give me for this stuff? And she said, give you? You're just out of luck. That's just the way it goes. And that is the way it goes. And see, the problem with that is, is that's the way you've got it with these corporations. In some cases, they don't really care. And why would, that's why we need to get this idea across that people need to take ownership of data. We've got to get our employees to recognize that they can't give away data. They've got to control it. They've got to protect it. And if they don't protect it, they're going to have situations like that happen where they give away data to somebody that's just going to use it. And, I'm, you know, I'm nearly 60 years old. My data is gone. I'm never going to get it back. And for the next 20 years, I'm going to be sitting here wondering who's got my data and how soon am I going to lose it to somebody else. My credit's always going to be at risk. You know, I'm a little old to be worrying about credit risk right now. But I don't have any choice because somebody decided they were going to upload to a Dropbox account. You know, those are things that we need to be cautious about and need to protect for. And that's what we need to train our employees about. This is not hard stuff. This is not hard to do, and it's not hard to train for. So that's why we need to bring our employees into the loop. I know there's a lot of people that think that employees are not worth training. They are our, our unknown. Employees are worth training. We need to bring them into the mix. We need to get the culture changed. We need to get them changed to the idea that they need to protect this data, they need to take ownership of the data, and to understand it. The things that I'd like to give as a takeaway to cut this all short and so that you all can go on and enjoy your rest of your day is think about privacy when you're thinking about information security. Add it to the conversation. Think about appropriate use of data. Make sure if you're talking about data, think about the idea of integrating it into information security, especially in this day of age of cloud security cloud providers. When you're thinking about cloud security or cloud providers, think about privacy. Keep that in mind when you're discussing the idea of moving to the cloud. Make sure that when you're talking about IT, IT security, cloud providers, think about your SLA. Think about your BAAs if you've got health insurance or health data moving into the cloud. Make sure that that BAA aligns with the SLA, because if they don't, you've got problems. Make sure that you establish a relationship with the um, cloud provider. Ensure that you know who owns the data once it's up with a cloud provider. I don't know if you remember the old days, but it used to be that cloud providers said that once they moved that data up into a cloud provider's arena or up in their services, a lot of times the data became theirs. You can't do that in a healthcare situation. Healthcare data needs to retain, be retained by the covered entity. Speaking about covered entities, I'm not sure if you all saw the situation recently, I, last year actually, a covered entity had entered into a contract with a German um, provider of hardware. What they did was they had uh, two servers on site within the covered entity that had 4,000 records of medical information for 4,000 patients. And somehow these folks got into a patient paying billing dispute. Well, the covered entity 
just told them, look, we're going to figure this out, but we're not going to pay right now. Well, the hardware company decided that they weren't going to put up with that, and they killed those two servers. And they lost the data. 4,000 patients. The situation, you can't, you can't sit there and hold patient information hostage like that. I'm not sure what's going to happen in that whole situation. My feeling is, is that the Office of Civil Rights will more than likely try and find the German company, but I'm not quite sure they're going to be able to reach out and get them. But that's something that you've got to be really careful about. The other thing you've got to remember with this stuff is, is if I can just make that one point clear again, get privacy into that conversation with your security folks. Get that alignment going. Get them to understand that privacy is part of that wrap that you bring around your, your data and make it secure because it helps the organization. It protects the organization. With that kind of information, you can get the organization to succeed. You can align with the business and help them succeed. And that's about all I've got for you. Any questions? Go have fun. 430.